stoppage of bleeding occurs in three steps after vessel injury. So in case of bleeding disorders, we need to assess each of the steps. If vessels are too fragile, that is, there is some problem in their connective tissue support, then there will be excessive bleeding. But there are many causes for that also, like uh, vitamin C deficiency, connective tissue disorders, which make blood vessels very fragile. If there is any problem in platelet plug formation, that will also lead to bleeding disorders. Some of these causes are decrease in platelet count, then uh, there is, if there is problem with platelet addition, even if platelet count is normal, for example, in uh, one Willebrand disease and uh, GP1B receptor problem, then uh, if there is problem with platelet aggregation, like in uh, GP2B 3A receptor problems, even with aspirin overdose, there can be abnormal platelet plug formation because uh, Aspirin inhibits uh, thromboxane, which is important for uh, these steps, platelet activation and platelet aggregation. Similarly, other uh, drug overdose like ADP receptor antagonists, GP2B3A receptor antagonists, they will lead to decreased platelet plug formation. Disorders of platelet plug formation manifest as appearance of petechiae and purpura on skin and mucous membranes. So these uh, spontaneous appearance of small small red dots due to bleeding in capillaries appear on skin and mucous membranes. The disorders of platelet plug formation can be assessed by various tests. One is platelet count. So if there is decrease in number of platelet counts, there will be decreased platelet plug formation. Second is bleeding time, which assesses the time taken for uh, bleeding to stop after an injury. Bleeding disorders can also occur due to disorders of clotting mechanisms. So we need to relook at the clotting pathway. So one limb is the intrinsic pathway and other side is extrinsic pathway and from factor 10 onwards it's a common pathway which is common to both intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. So deficiency of any of these clotting factors can lead to decreased clot formation and bleeding. Very important cause is hemophilia which occurs due to factor 8 and factor 9 deficiency. So factor 8 deficiency is known as hemophilia A and factor 9 deficiency is known as hemophilia B. Then there can be liver diseases which lead to decreased formation of clotting factors as these are proteins and we know proteins are synthesized in liver. More importantly, liver disease also lead to vitamin K deficiency because uh, vitamin K is a fat soluble look and uh, for its absorption, it requires presence of bile. So liver diseases lead to vitamin K deficiency which is responsible for uh, regeneration of factors 2, 7, 9 and 10. So these causes will lead to deficiency of clotting factors. Second cause may be presence of inhibitors of clotting factors. So concentration of uh, clotting factors will be normal but there may be certain inhibitors which inhibit its activity. All the problems of clotting pathways have prolonged clotting time. So clotting time is prolonged. Further assessment needs to be done to pinpoint which pathway is involved and which clotting factor is involved. Now extrinsic and common pathways can be assessed by a simple method taking blood and adding tissue thromboplast into it and then finding out how much time it takes to clot. This is known as prothrombin time. In this we are adding this factor 3 that is tissue thromboplastin and activating extrinsic path. So if any of these clotting factors, factor 7, 10, 5, 2, 1 are uh, deficient or are inhibited, there will be prolonged prothrombin time. Intrinsic pathway is assessed by activating factor 12. Now this is known as activated partial thromboplastin time. So any of the factors of intrinsic and common pathway if they are affected, APTT will be prolonged. So we can deduce from that that when common pathway factors are affected, both APTT and PT will be prolonged. Now another assessment known as thrombin time assesses the function of thrombin that is time taken for conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin after addition of thrombin. Further assessment involves specific factor assays. Presence of inhibitors of clotting factors is assessed by mixing studies. The principle is simple that 
when we are suspecting any clotting factor disorders these can be corrected by replacing that specific clotting factors however if there is presence of inhibitors they will block the function of that transfused clotting factor so in mixing studies patient's plasma is mixed with normal plasma so this normal plasma will have that deficient clotting factor if our assessment is corrected that pt and ptt which were abnormal before if they are corrected that means clotting factors present in normal plasma have corrected the problem however if there is no improvement that means these clotting factors are not able to correct the problem now this is due to the presence of inhibitors in the patient's plasma so whatever normal clotting factors are there they are also inhibited by these inhibitors so we have discussed a lot of assessment strategies for uh, platelet function we talked about bleeding time platelet count then uh, for uh, clotting factors we talked about prothrombin time for extrinsic pathway activated partial thromboplastin time for intrinsic pathway clotting time prolonged in both we talked about uh, thrombin time time taken for conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin and we also spoke about specific factor assays so these are the major assessment strategies for various bleeding disorders